once I started showing him stuff that was wrong, he says that I made it that way and I don't take care of stuff and you know, I need to move right away and it's going to cost him so much money to fix it up. That's all they were worried about. Money, money, money. Sure, they took my rent. Oh, yeah. My rent, no problem. One time, uh, Thanksgiving, at, at the ex girlfriend's mother's house, you know, for Thanksgiving, whatever day they were there, you know. And I said to him, I says, hey, I says, uh, I got your rent, you know. You know, you, you got a check? No, I got cash. I can pay you cash. Oh, sure, fine. I take cash. Oh, sure. Yeah, hand it over. He never told his wife at the time. And later on, six months later, she posed this one on me saying, Carl, you're one month behind. So I'm thinking, and I'm flipping out. I'm freaking out right now. It's about this time of the year. And she's telling me at the end of the year that I'm one month short. You still owe me for November. You're one, oh, oh December, the next month or whatever. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm like, wait a minute, I paid it, I paid it. I can't be late, I can't be late. I paid it, I paid it. I said, that over, no, no one month behind. And I said, you know what, I paid your husband, cash. Did he tell you? No, he didn't tell me. Well, there you go. I gave him 375 Oh, really? Yeah, you need to talk to him. And he didn't write me a receipt. And I was very upset that he didn't write me a receipt. He said he'd send me one in the mail. He said it must have crossed his mind. He never did. Got all about it. Must be nice to collect money and, and not even say nothing. He's like, hey, thanks. Yeah, I can use this for uh, spending on dinners for everybody and gas. You know, for a vehicle for driving around. Oh, I, yeah. Thanks, Carl. Oh. That's how I got treated. They didn't fix nothing. They took my money, and that was it. That was their income. That was none of my issue, none of my concern. It was their money. They earned it. That's it. We'll go to find out that, uh, no. They're supposed to take my rent, put it in a bank, let them build up equity that they told me right from the beginning. The Keep putting my rent in the bank, let it build up equity, you know. And uh, if something goes wrong, they won't fix it. They take that money from the bank and fix it. Because that's what it's for. It's not for their pleasure. It's not for you, okay, I gave you a thousand dollars for rent, you know, I'm, I'm covered for a couple months, whatever. Uh, that's supposed to go into the bank. You're renting. See, they're responsible for their own mortgage payments. That's their, that's their responsibility. You're not, res they told me I, I had to get my rent on time so they can pay the bills. They kept telling me that. Carl, you need to send your rent on time because we need your rent to pay our bills. Really? Yes. And I can't pay our bills if you don't give your rent on time. Right there, I should have think to myself, these are slumlords. I should turn them in. Right from the beginning. Huh. Huh. And I told you about uh, how her husband at the time told me to fix a hinge on a broken door to the attic. Okay. And he'll pay me for, uh, for it. He thought he was going to pay five or six bucks and that'd be it. I took $25 off the rent and he blew a freaking gasket. Oh my god. I said, yeah, sure. To hinge, maybe cost maybe five or six bucks. Yeah, sure. What about my gas? They go, what? Duh. What, what is it? Uh, well, about 20 miles. 10 miles there and 10 miles back. 
Okay. What about my time of service? It took me six hours to replace that damn hinge. For one thing, the wood was so bad that I couldn't... The screws were painted into the woodwork, painted into the hinges. I couldn't get this. I had a chisel. The paint was 200 years old. So it was like concrete. There's no way to get the screws out of the hinges, the broken hinge. So I had to take my screwdriver and the hammer. All my knuckles were bleeding. My hands were all cut off, you know, slipping, you know. The, that house tasted my blood. After six hours, I took the top hinge off, right? So when I put the new hinge on there, it wasn't exactly the same hinge. So it was, you know, it was a different kind of hinge. So the wood was so bad that I couldn't put that hinge in there because it was too big. Well, I got as close as possible, but it was a little bigger. So I put that hinge on the bottom of the door. So I had to take that bottom hinge out carefully. And like I said, they painted over it, they painted over it, they painted over it. It was a flat surface. First I had to find the screw. So I'm with a screwdriver and a hammer, and a screwdriver and a hammer, using a knife, using a knife, you know, using a screwdriver, hammer, a screwdriver, had it, and just, you know, slipping and banging and cutting all my hands, my fingers up, you know. The door is hanging halfway on the hinge, on the bottom hinge. You know, it wouldn't stay up, you know. Like, I just wanted to rip the whole thing down, just destroy the whole house. I was getting so mad. It was the first time I hurt myself. That's when I started getting mad. Like, God! You, know, you ever tear off a piece of skin? And then you tear it off completely? Because, you know, you can't have skin just hanging there. Sweat pouring down. It was like, uh... 97, 110 degrees out, and then that attic, I had that attic door open, you know, all the heat from that attic was like 150 degrees coming right at me, sweat just pouring down, sweat just pouring down, no no air, no nothing, you know, so I'm, I'm sitting there trying to get these screws out, you know, get the screws out, trying to be gentle, not to wreck the woodwork or nothing, you know, so I got that out, then I had to get this, once I got it out of the the house part, the frame part, then I had to get it out of the door. Same thing. I had to chisel out the, you know, the, the, the groove. I had, first I had to find the screw. Then I had to chisel out the groove to get the screwdriver in there. I mean, it took six hours. I should have just left it alone and said, Dean, you get somebody else to fix your crap because I'm not fixing your crap. But he told me the same thing she told him. You've been here long enough, you should do it for free. You see, he was getting the house appraised. And when he tried to open the door, when, as soon as he opened the door and he lifted up, it fell over. And it was hanging by the hinge. And the guy's like looking at him like, really? That's when the insulation was in there, that, that gray insulation in there. And it was about uh, three to four feet deep. You know, so that room was, that attic was never used. You know? And uh, I paid my extra up and then her husband good money to bag that crap up and get it out of there so I could make it into the room because my ex landlord told me I need to buy new furniture. So I, where am I going to put all this furniture? So I'm going to put it in the attic. And I couldn't put it in the attic unless I got all that insulation out there and put a floor in it. There was no floor in there. So much work I had put into that house and I got nothing for it. I should send her a bill. For put, removing that insulation. 500 bucks. Remove the insulation, put it up in the attic. 500 bucks. It took three weeks. Probably more than 500 bucks. It took three weeks. To like her, 15 bucks an hour. Eight hours a day. 
three weeks. My God, that would be a lot more than 500 bucks. And then to put the flooring in there? They had no flooring in there. I put the flooring in there. My nails, my screws, my time. A lot of work. Because they had me believing, hey, you, know, you get new furniture and you can stay here. I should have told all this to the judge. I should have told all this to the judge. I should have told all this to the judge. I remodeled that attic. We should just call it even. Drop this $2,000 lawsuit because I'm going to charge them for remodeling their attic. Because she told me I need to upgrade on my furniture, which I did. She said it was very nice stuff, which she planned on keeping. She was like, evict me out. I had no place to go. I'd end up, she had it all planned out. I'd probably go back to Milwaukee, live with my family, and lose my job, lose everything. And she get to keep it all. And plus, sue me for removal of stuff and all that. Like, well, she's dead. Oh, my God. So I should call her sue her. Yeah. Put the job two weeks from now. There you go. Never thought about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, back back to the hinges. Okay. Give me pinches. Her husband, ex husband now, snapped on me. Saying twenty five dollars re was ridiculous, totally ridiculous. I mean, he just swearing and cussing and swearing, spit coming out of his mouth, pretty much yelling at me. And I took twenty five dollars off the rent. All that work I did for them hinges. It wasn't my job to do it from the beginning. So I should sue him for that too. Yeah. Fixing the door. That twenty-five dollars wasn't even worth it. Fifteen bucks an hour times six. There you go, like she did me. Then another thing was the doorbell quit working, which my ex girlfriend broke. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. I told him that she broke it. But anyways, I'm nice enough to replace it, and. She says, just take it off the rent. So again, they thought five or six dollars for the doorbell button. So again, I get one for like $23, which had a light on it. I told you guys this story. And um, it had a light on it. He, they come right away. They come out of the woodwork. They want the rent money on, and I says, hey, I got this doorbell, you know, take $25 off for it, you know. He goes, that's insane. Oh, yeah, the, the hinge thing? I told him, yeah, sure, okay. That, yeah, it was five, six bucks for the hinge, but what about my time for fixing it? And then I had to borrow money from my boss because he demanded that I get it fixed now so when he gets the realtor in there to come look at the place that they can just open up the door, go in there, check it out, you know. He, he demanded that it, it was being fixed. I should have told him, F you, I ain't fixing crap. And he would say, F you, get the hell out. But he can't do that. See, this whole system of their way of thinking, they think they're God. And I'm the one that told him the house was for sale. Top it off. I'm the one that told him the place was for sale. They bought it for a profit. That's it. Take no money out or put no money in. Take out money as much as possible. Jack up the rent. Slap some paint on the house. That's what they always had. You know? The day Salih was murdered. And he's bringing paint in. The same day. 
I mean, the blood was probably still pumping out of her body. She come right after that Saturday. She came that Saturday night with the paint. That was kind of a weird con co what is that? coincidence. New word for today? Coincidence. And the daughter's looking at her shoes. Her daughter was looking at a dead lady's shoes in the basement. The whole basement was trashed out. You can see that in my videos. And me saying about her daughter saying that uh, her daughter is just kind of like her. One time I was at a birthday party with my moped. Her daughter's, you know, act, you know, nice to me, you know, whatever. Say, oh, let me ride your moped, let me ride your moped. I'm like, no, no, she's well, can I at least sit on it? Says, you can sit on it, you know, but you're not driving it. She says, well, start it up. I just want to feel the vibration or whatever. I'm like, whatever. So I started it up. She goes, how you start it? I just pushed the button. Okay, she started up. And she's like ribbing it up, you know, she's like, ooh, yeah. I'm like, hey, careful. It's on a kickstand, but if you rib it up too much, the kickstand will go down and go right through the garage. She's like, that would be awesome, yeah. Smash up my shit, right? That'd be awesome, yeah. What is wrong with you people? And she started laughing. So I shut it off, you know, and she got mad at me, whatever. She said, so what you got in here? Open it up. I want to see what's in there. I want to see what's in there. Are you smoking cigarettes again? Whatever. Show me. I want to see. Are you smoking cigarettes? That's how her daughter treated me. No. No. I, I'm not smoking cigarettes. So I opened it up like a fool. So, uh, what's this? It's a pack of cigarettes with a lighter in it. But there's no cigarettes in it. It's just a lighter. Uh, you don't need this. What do you need a lighter for? Uh, why well, start a bonfire? Uh, here. Start a fire. That's why I brought a lighter. It can't have a lighter. Whatever. What else you got up in here? I'm like, quit digging through my stuff. She's, oh, what's this? And she pulls up a dollar bill. And she's like, right in front of me, she takes the dollar bill and puts it in her pocket. I go, put that back. Put what back? And she shoves it in her pocket. I mean, put that dollar bill, don't touch me. Put that dollar back. And that, that's my money. That's in case I break down whatever. I need to get gas. I got money in there. Oh, you got more money here? Let me see. Let me find. Oh, quarters. I like that.